So, look, firstly, just like to, to welcome you to this Beef and Lamb New Zealand Tasman uh, Farming for Profit webinar. Uh, the theme or topic for our webinar is adding value to your business, and discussing that with us is uh, Blair Evans. Blair is a business advisor with Malik McLean, uh, accounting and, and business advisory firm based in Invercargill and also here in Tasman. Um, coming from a farming background, Blair went to Lincoln University, and we won't hold that against you, Blair, uh, where he completed a BCom uh, Ag and then became a rural banker. He spent six years in South Canterbury before returning back to Southland in 2001. Uh, to further his banking career and grow a farming business. He held a number of roles within the bank from rural manager to regional manager, uh, and his last position um, was, that of national, uh, was that of a national coaching role. In 2017, he was named ASB Leader of the Year, and in 2018, he joined the Malik McLean team as a director and business advisor coach. Uh, so look, um, I'm really looking forward to uh, Blair's presentation today, um, and I guess the specific topics that um, Blair's going to be covering, and, and he'll go into a more detail obviously, are around mindset, understanding where your money goes, uh, what makes uh, a better business, and I guess taking some time to understand what your future might look like. Um, so look, I'm going to hand over to you now Blair, and we look forward to your um, presentation over the next hour. Thank you. Hey, look, thanks very much, Greg. And, um, you know, I just want to probably share some of the um, ideas and, I suppose, um, things that I've learned over the last 20-odd years working with farmers. Um, and, and some of it's, it's, it's – look, I'm not an accountant, so there's not a lot of um, accountant ease in this. Uh, it's more around mindsets and things that you can do. And I'm sort of hoping that most of these you'll be aware of, but um, some of them there'll be reinforcement enforcement ideas. Um, so look, what I would encourage you to do is just have a pad or pen or a bit of a notepad ready because there may be some things that resonate with you as, as we go through this. So please um, feel free to take some notes. Um, I will stop sort of after a few different mindsets and we can have a few questions then, Greg. So I'll kick into it. Um, I guess, um, as I mentioned, that one of the things that I... So I sort of um, work with a lot of clients on is just helping them to get into the right mindset. And, and farming is and continues to be quite stressful. Um, there's so many things going on, particularly things that we can control and other things that we can't. So I just want to take you through um, a couple of mindsets. And then I'm going to talk to you about sort of where your money goes. So in the scheme of things, um, we know it all comes in, but where does it actually go? And Mallet McLean have designed a what we call a business 101 cycle. So I just want to take you through that. It may just help give you some clarity. Um, and then just working through ideas to build a, a smarter, better business. So having the right mindset, and, you know, I suppose an image sort of tells a thousand words, but this to me looks, uh, you know, very peaceful, at home, comfortable, and, and how can you not have a good mindset in this environment? But it's not always like that. So there's a couple of mindsets I just want to take you through. And the first one is um, one of Steve Covey's um, circle, Circles of Influence. And, and down the bottom here is um, the circle of control. So this is what we can control. These are the things that are in... You know, where we can direct our time and energy towards the things that we can control. And this will minimise um, your feelings of being overwhelmed and, 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 I suppose, frustrated because there's a number of things that we, we can't control. And that's the influence. So can we influence? So, so in your home environment or with your finance, you, you can have an influence. You can't have complete control. You can't control commodity prices. You can't control interest rates but you may be able to influence some of those by you know locking in interest rates or what is your debt level and how you handle that but also you know with your family and and, and I often talk about you know like running a business is not just a business particularly farming because you're living at home it's your home life you've got family and there'll be people on this call with all different stages of, of throughout that um, what age your family is but um, so ha ha what what can you influence the, the one that, and I suppose it is the biggest circle, and I see this time and time again, um, and it is, you know, becoming, it can become a burden on, on, on your shoulders, and it's the circle of concern. And, you know, if we think about land and water, and we think about carbon, and we think about um, EV utes, 
and and all these things and it's like what how much of that can you control and just a simple tip here is um if 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 it's a circle of concern um it's trying to park it it's you might have some influence but you can't control the weather you can't control commodity prices um, and so if, if, if you come back down, look at the size of that circle, the, the lowest one there, it's what you can control. And often we worry about too many things that we can't actually either influence or they're just a concern, but actually come back to what, what we can control. And an wee tip there is, particularly in that circle of, of influence, is that um, rate it, give it a score out of 10. And if it's, if it's a concern scoring lower than five, then, then, then move it to concern. So, look, I can't do much about it. it it's not part of my concern. Um, I need to concentrate on what I can control. So that's the first one. And I, the second one, um, it's, it's the, we'll call it the achiever matrix. And you've got important and non-important on the left, and you've got urgent and non-urgent on the right. And we often spend our time in the quadrant of urgency. It's the, it's the things that we have to do. They're, they're, every day we, we, we're always in, in this sort of mode of things that are, have to be done. We need to do them. The stock needs to be shifted. Um, we need to feed out at this time of year. It just it has to happen. So often we end up in this, in this place. And for those of you that are, I think there's a number of you that have got, you know, some outside income or you're doing, you know, other jobs, um, then this is sort of the day-to-day, -day, the working, the, if you're dealing with people, um, what, what they need your support from and how, how you can help them. So we end up spending, this is probably 80% of our time. Quadrant two is where we really want to try and get to more often because that's the quadrant of, of quality. And um, I often call this one the quadrant of dedicating. We need to dedicate time like you've done today. This is a great example of dedicating time. It's not urgent. You didn't have to be on this call today, but it's probably important that you're upskilling and understanding um, what, what other opportunities are out there for you. So this is where some really good planning you know, goes on. I'll come back to that in a minute, but the, the quadrant of deception, it's urgent, but it's not as important. So interruptions and some phone calls and emails and reports and meetings, things that, look, they're important, but, you know, we've all been to those meetings and it's like, why, why did that meeting run that way? And that was a total waste of my time and I didn't need to be there. Be there so could I delegate that to someone else? The other one is the real time waster and I've got four boys, uh, sort of teenage boys. And, um, and often I get frustrated um, with some of and I, just with the time or where they're spending their time. And, you know, we see it with social media or, or, or whatever they're doing, you know, particularly when they've got a device in their hand, I think it's time wasting. Maybe they're being, you know, maybe they're educating themselves, but um, it's the quadrant of waste. And if we find ourselves spending too much time in here, we probably need to give ourselves a bit of an uppercut and go, right, put it down, go and do something that's more meaningful. What we try, what we try and do is focus our clients in this um, quadrant of, of quality is how do you, and we call this to dedicate, how do you get more time in, in this quadrant? Um, and often the way to do that is set your own deadline. So um, if I need to do something, which, and, and this is a good example of this presentation, um, is to set a deadline like a week earlier than what it's really due. So then I know that I'm prepared and it's going to happen. And in, in your farming calendar, it's having those, those key events, the timing um, around what should happen when and how are you going to make that happen. So often it, it's setting deadline. I was speaking to a group of young farmers a few weeks ago and I said to them that one of the things I'd encourage them to do is make sure that they were spending more time in this quadrant too, which effectively is office time. And I said that, you know, the, the business, farming business today is quite different to what it was 20 years ago. Um, it has got more complex. The, the range of information, the range of skills, the range of people that you need in your business has certainly increased. And so... You can't just go in and, and go into farming and say, look, I just love tractor driving. I just want to drive a tractor. If, if you're going to be taking over a family farm or you need to be um, um, thinking about the farm from a wider, wider scope, you also need to understand nutrient budging. You also need to understand riparian planting. You also need to understand GST and finances and what's the best way about that. So um, having office time, and I, I put the challenge out to them that it's probably – 
you know, the equivalent of at least a day, a fortnight, and some would say a day a week, but actually working on, on your business. So I don't know whether you want to pause there, um, Greg, for any, any, any questions. Have anyone got any comments around that? I mean, this is just helping the mindset at this, at this stage. Look, I think that's a, it is a good point or place to, to stop for, for now, um, Blair. Look, the question I've got, you know, you talk about this Achiever Matrix. Um, how, you know, what's the best way for, for farmers to go about working out um, what's not urgent but really important? You know, how, how do you work out that, um, you know, it's actually not that important to, um, I don't know, uh, make sure that the fuel tank's full and versus I'm paying my GST on time or whatever it might be? Yeah, well, the fuel tank's probably a good example because it's maybe not so important today, but it might be important in six weeks' time when you're in the middle of doing something. It's like, oh, I forgot to get that tank filled. So it, it's, it's, it is pre-planning. It's what's coming up. What do I need to be thinking about? What do I need to be doing? And farmers generally do this quite well, actually, because it's very seasonal. It's like I'm coming into lambing. What do I need to make sure I've got? You know, go around the lambing shed and get things done. Um, and GST, I'll talk about a wee bit of that, that, that later um, because GST is one of those things for, I wouldn't say most farmers actually, but um, for some it's like, oh, I've got to go and do that. It's office work and I've got to go and pay my GST. Um, it's how can we plan to do that better? And that's what we're challenged with as far as that's what we're trying to encourage our clients to do is have a smarter, better business. So how can we help that process? And I'll talk a little bit of that later, but this is just really making sure you're planning for success. And whether that be your, you know, plan for a holiday, go to quadrant two, we're gonna go away in October, where are we gonna go? We need to book our accommodation, we need to do it, we need to tell the kids, et cetera, et cetera, it's locked in and it's loaded. We need to plan to get the fertilizer test done, so then we need to sit down with the fertilizer rep and work through what applications we're going to be doing. As opposed to, oh, oh we need to, oh, we should have done that last week, um, you know? So, so essentially, it's about that pre, as you say, pre-planning at the beginning of each yep. month. Work out what your 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 core activities or actions for that month are, and making sure that you get them lined up um, uh, efficiently, so that yep. you're not waiting to that eleventh hour to to do it. Yep. Or if you're going into town, it's like I've got a list of things, and actually here's my list, and I work my way through the list and get everything I need, as opposed to getting home and going, oh, that's right, I should have got that, and, and then you just waste the half a day. So. You mentioned a holiday. Surely that's um, the quadrant of waste, isn't it? Isn't that wasted time? <laughs> Into you talk to. Um, no, no. Um, that's that's well. The trouble is, if you know, and I think we all know people like this, that the harder you work and you stay on farm, um, actually productivity does does drop. So I think by going away and you know viewing at some of the pictures or, or getting to a place where you relax and feel comfortable, you'll come back with a different idea and feel more refreshed. Is what what we've found. Okay. Blair, I've had a question come through. Um, what about all this, the political stuff we're dealing with, coastal environments, etc.? What quadrant would you put that stuff in? As there's plenty of it. I think it's quadrant two. I think it's dedicate. So the another way of looking at these is um, quadrant one is do. So we have to do it now. I have to go and shift the stock. Um, I have to um, put up a fence for tomorrow. I have to do. So quadrant one is very much the doing. Um, quadrant two is dedicate. So we need to dedicate time to this. Um, dedicate an understanding. Doesn't mean we necessarily have to do the doing. And that's the other thing I'll talk about. I think you know farm profitability has increased, but some have still got a mindset that I haven't got the profit. I don't want to spend money on a consultant. I, I just, I can't allow us to let this go. I need to have that number eight wire mentality where I need to do it all myself. And I think if your business is going well and commodity prices are good, um, interest rates low, then surely there's profitability there. So you can dedicate, dedicate time to that. And then it becomes down to, you know, it's not so important, but it is urgent, then you can delegate it, which is um, quadrant three, and quadrant four is, is basically dump, dump it. Okay? Thank you. Right, so I'll move on. Um, so where, do, where does your money go? You know, like we, we work all year, um, and then we go and see the annual, uh, and see, see the, get the annual accounts from the accountant, and they talk about profit, and we go, but I haven't got the profit and you want me to pay tax and I haven't actually 
where did it all go? So we've developed this um, this business 101 cycle, and um, and I'll just I'll take you through it reasonably quickly. It's 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 more of a um, it's a bit of a guide, a picture here, but we do actually load this up with their clients' information to try and give them an understanding, a quick visual on where their money goes. So obviously you've got the assets in the farm at the top there. So that's everything from your your stock, your plant, your your land, um, because you need that to generate your sales, and and then so that's the income. Then you've got the expenses offsetting that, and so let's say this figure's sales is three hundred thousand, expenses might be two hundred thousand, which gives you a hundred thousand dollar profit. And then coming through, and most farmers don't have so there's work in progress there, which is WIP. That's really relevant for businesses in town, um, but farmers don't have a lot of work in progress. They will have some stock movement, so did the stock go up or down, and and then maybe a small amount of debtors, but not many in, in, in a farm. So that brings you that down to the cash flow or the cash you've got in the business. So you, you've made the money, um, you've got the cash, and where does it go? So then it flies around the wheel, it's like a wheel, flies out and some goes out into tax, some goes out into yourself, and then and the bank says, actually, we want some. So then you've got the surplus. Hopefully there's a surplus um, that you can reinvest back into the business. So you can either put it back into this business or you can take it out and put it into another business, an off-farm business, a rental property, a commercial property, or, or, or have a wee sideline on the side. Um, so we, we sit down with clients and explain this, and it's really great for young people that are just starting out in business because they don't necessarily know where their money goes. And the 30-odd pages in your annual accounts is, is a bit of a challenge, and challenge for most people to actually understand where it all goes. So we developed this as a very short short, easy way to see where your money goes. Very similar to, to a budget, but this is actually from what happened last year. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll just, I'll just carry on. Um, ideas to, to build a better business. And I've got a number of things just to run through here. Um, just making sure that, you know, that I've talked about this um, a little bit already, but making sure you, you spend time working on your business. I think, um, you know, even for myself, like I work in, work in Mallet McLean uh, full time. I've got a farm, I've got a share milker on it. Um, but it's so easy for me to work on other people's businesses. But then to go back on my own, I, I have to have the discipline and have to have a meeting rhythm with my share milker to make sure that happens. So... You know, and, and to do, the, one of the reasons we need to do that is because what, what, what's actually driving your income? What's driving your, you know, what's driving your business? Where's it coming from? Where's the income coming from? And what, where are the expenses going? So, you know, there's certain things that, um, you know, if, if, it, if you're a sheep farm, it's the meat, it's the wool. Um, but where does all that start and how can you get more of it? Well, it starts with your soil health and your fertility and your grass and species and your, and your genetics, uh, all those sort of things. So um, are you spending enough time on all of that um, to help help plan? The next one is, um, is, is KPIs or key performance indicators. Um, and I guess, look, another way of explaining this is like the Olympics are on now. And so anyone who's gone to the Olympics will have – KPIs. So, how am I tracking? Um, if I want to run a marathon, and that's not high on my my ability or agenda at the moment, but if I wanted to, it's like, well, how would I go about that? How would I break that down? And I'd set some targets, and it might be I need to go for a four, four or five k run, um, you know, in the first week or two, and then build that up, but actually check in against what I expected. So, I expected to do this in week four, and how am I going against that? And it's no different on, on the farm. And a great one I often talk to, to farmers about is, you know, often one of the KPIs for them is that well, I, I assess my lambing percentage as my KPI, my tailing percent. So, okay, well, that's great. And I try and, you know, increase it year on year. But as, as a critical KPI going back from that and saying, well, what's your scanning percent? Are you scanning? Uh, well, it was there a drop off between scanning and tailing, and there may be good reasons for that. Maybe you're, you know, we've got farms on the southern coast here that are really exposed, and so they might have a high scanning, but a, a relatively high drop off to, to they get to tailing. But if you haven't got those situations, and you could get an extra, 
you know, 5% from scanning to tailing, um, you know, on, on say, 2,500 ewes, um, that might equate to about 15 grand. Uh, where did I have that? Uh, an extra 125 lambs at $120 is 15,000. So um, is that a possibility to try and get 5% gain from that? But just, just having KPIs and um, having them in your business is really important. And, and, and businesses, you know, farming will have, there should be some common ones, but then obviously there's different ones to suit. And, you know, some might have a, a farm working expenses as a percent of their income, or it might be a debt loading, or it might be, you know, um, average kill weight of lambs. And I guess that leads into the next one around growing your income. You know, is there a way, how can you grow grow your income and there, there will be you know in every business there's different ways and it's thinking outside the square or um, can you depending on your debt situation um, can you borrow money and grow grow your income from enough farm asset or can you look at doing things a wee bit a wee bit differently and, and some that's not the op not necessarily an opportunity because the debt levels um, you know on most farms are probably at a, at a level where there's not a lot of fat in the system to be able to go and borrow money. But if you could, could you borrow money and spend it developing that hill block or is, are your grasses holding you back or is your fertility, do you need to give it a boost? Um, the, the next one is, I suppose, monitor expenses. And a good way of doing that, I suppose, is you know having a look at your actuals from last year and just going through line by line. And some of those are fixed and, and you can't control them, like your rates, um, some insurance, possibly a little bit of room to move there. But power maybe change companies, but it's not going to change greatly. But So what are your big items? And should you be looking at your different suppliers and just saying, is there a better way? Can I reduce? One caveat around that though is just be careful um, around what expenses you take out because it may actually impact on your income and it may not be in that first year but in the in the following years um, next one is is farm management and, and look one of the things I've noticed over the years is that you can have two two farms that are very similar um, but often it does come back to to the management of that farm and so do you have the skills? And I mentioned earlier that farming is becoming more complex. So how, how much do you want to invest in yourself and how much do you want to learn and grow your skills in all the areas that, that you need to to be a really efficient farmer? Um, because that, that's becoming more challenging. Well, I think it is, in my personal view. So, um, but can we can we get other people around us to help us do this? And and, and can we use more specialists um, in our business to help us and do more projects? Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of talk around carbon and trees and is that a possibility? And particularly, I imagine, some of your locations, um, is there a possibility to put, put more forestry in? And if so, who's the best person to talk to about that? And so... You know, like nutrient nutrient budgeting, and uh, you know, do you want to learn about that? Um, do you want to understand exactly what it means, or do you want to do get someone in who's going to run that report for you, and then have a conversation and say, right, oh, what do I need to change, or how do I improve my numbers? So, um, so just um, you know, understanding your own skill set, and this is also aligned with you know, and particularly, and I'll talk a wee bit about it soon, but farm succession is that um, the skill sets to be able to run your property or run your business at a high level, has your successor or has your family um, member coming through got the skills? Or what areas do they need to develop? Um, they might be good at, you know, machinery, and that might be their thing, or driving tractors or contracting, but, um, um, you know, the bulk of the income from your farm may come from meat or wool, so productivity from from animals. And if they, if they don't enjoy that, then... That's a possible. That could be a challenge, and um, and and what's what do you put in place to try and help that? And that's where KPIs are good as well. Like let's let's measure and monitor and to make sure we're on track and we're not going to have a a surprise in in twelve months. I just wonder, um, Blair, um, another opportunity to have it, ask a few questions. Um, yes. One of the ones that if I just go back a couple of slides there, you were talking about know where your money goes. You talked about um, that circle and the reinvestment into into the business. 
Are there any rules uh, of thumb that you have about how much to reinvest in the business as opposed to perhaps um, just paying off debt? Um, is my banking hat on or off here? Um, look, I think that, you know, this is a cliche and I hate using this, but um, each business is different. And so it depends on your starting point. And I think that um, the, the, the thing, uh, what I would say here is that um, you need to be really clear on what your budget looks like and not just this year um, under a, you know, you could be paying three or, you know, early 3% interest rate. But what does it look like under a 5% or most banks are using around 6% interest rate? Well, what is it on a, on a commodity um, if, a, if a lamb is, you know, um, $120, um, what, what, what would I work on in three or four years' time? And I think that's what drives that. So am I trying to strengthen my business that it can handle um, a status quo sort of, you know, 5 or 6% interest rate, which will drive that decision? Or if I've got very low debt, then um, do I want to put in, you know, like a new shed on the farm? Would it be a nice to have or is it actually going to, um, add value to the property or what, what am I going to be doing in that shed or should I be putting that 100 or 120 grand into, um, into another property or growing an outside asset um, but very much a personal sort of what's because some people are comfortable with debt and other people don't like debt um, so it's, it, it's a difficult one to say um, but as long as there's something after that payback debt that can go back into the business that, that's a bonus and the other thing I've noticed in the last couple of years is that the banks seem to be wanting uh, more people to pay back debt, particularly in the dairy circle. I don't know whether it's as high in, in sheep because and generally with sheep, you've got a lot better equity in your business. Okay. And look, I guess you've hit on something that I, um, I think is really important too, and that's that skill development side of things. Yes. Um, you know, I guess in going back to your days as a um, as a trainer with the bank, how much time um, were you encouraging your staff there to do in, in uh, I guess you call it professional development or skill development? And and how does that relate to how much time farmers should be spending on, on that side of things? <laughs> yeah, well, it's two different. Yeah, like one in the bank that you... You start on a graduate program, they still do it today. It's a 12 to 18 month program where you're, you're, getting, um, you're getting assigned effectively a rural manager. So in, in a farming sense, that would be, you know, like a, um, or, or, a, or a competent farmer to work with. But you're also seeing different aspects of the business all the way through that 12 to 18 month period. Um, I guess um, the... It, and in a bank, it is, it is it, I suppose it's very structured and um, and you have to be meeting goals and objectives as you go through, which is no different for farming. I mean, you know, I can give an example. We're working with a family at the moment and, um, and they've got a daughter that, that wants, wants to come through the farm and, and she's still relatively young, um, in her 20s, sort of the late 20s. But, um, and, and, it, and, and you can just notice between her and, say, mum and dad, there is a real skill skill difference um but she's wanting to just you know take the training wheels off and go but to go with what like and so we're, we're trying to not not do it all at once but just gradually bring her into the business and get her to then start taking over the stock management or getting her to take over the dealing with the fertilizer getting her to take over the the grass seed selection and just a number just so that confidence can be built up because it's um, it's no different in sport. So if I wanted to teach you how to pass the ball or, or show you how to, how to hit a hockey ball into it, I would show you the skill first. So I'll, I'll show you a couple of times and, and then I'll ask you to show me that you understand. So can you grab it? And you may not do it exactly the same as I would, but it's the, okay, I do understand. And then as they do that, there might be four or five or six or eight or 10 in farming, different ways of things that you can look at and say, look, and if you use the analogy of passing a ball, look, you need to stand this way and move your hips or pass with your hand on top. So there's all these wee things in farming as well that we just, um, farmers generally take for granted because we've learnt them over a number of years. We don't actually know why we do what we do, but we do. But try and teach to someone else and it can be, it can be exciting, um, but it also can be challenging. Okay, thank you. I've had a question come through, Blair. Um, how do you set realistic KPIs, especially financially? 
Um, yeah, well, that's, yep. So, and look, we've previously in the bank, you know, if, if we got a budget from someone, because generally we get the last three years um, annual accounts, and we look at that as, as I suppose, the benchmark. And then if we if we see their budget and the two don't match, it's like, well, this is unrealistic. How how are you going to do that? So I think the best way to do is look at what you've done previously, particularly if it's a steady state sort of business, look what you've done previously and see where you can tweak it realistically. There's no point being too optimistic because what happens if you're too optimistic and you go, you know, I can do this, I can do this, and then you get to the end, it's like, oh, I've improved it, but I never got to that level. You have this sense of feeling like I, of failure. I didn't quite make it. So it's, it is very much being, yeah, this is what I, this is what I've done, but these are the reasons. And, and I suppose if you've, you know, as I talked about earlier, I made the example up of you're going to develop a hill block and you're going to put fertilizer and re grass and you're going to put 40 or 50 grand into that block over a three year period. I would expect to see a return coming from that in, in, in a budget. So it's it's looking at what you've done in the past and if it's a new the new venture, a new a new opportunity, then it's probably trying to talk to your advisors around what is possible. Um, you know, if it's buying a rental property, it's well, what's the rents in the area? Um, well, what's the average rent and why would I think I could get a higher rent than 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 whatever that one is. Thank you. So how how do you go about it then? Uh, um, when you go to the uh, to the accountant then with uh, to to review your your financial performance, because dare I say it, and I say that this at risk of upsetting a lot of accountants, um, most farm accountants are there to produce a tax report uh, yes. as opposed to um, management advice to um, to their clients. Yep. How yep. do you get the uh, the right answer in terms of those KPIs from the accountant about what's important for your business? Oh, it's a great point. And, uh, and I think you did right. So uh, most accountants probably wouldn't have that, comp well, the confidence probably um, to, to work through key KPIs. So um, I think that there's other places like, um, it, it, well, it's, <laughs> Part of it is actually understanding your, your business and, um, and so understanding in a way that makes sense to you. And, and so I would be looking at, and so we, we use Figit and Zero here um, quite a lot. So Figit have got a really good reporting um, where we can look at the last three years in, a, in basically a one pager and have a look at the, the income, the expenses. And then what we hope to do is we're just looking at this at the moment, but benchmark it against um, a, a like-minded set of group, you know, of clients. So if we know that your your your, your turnover is say $130 a stock unit, um, and we know that your expenses, is, I'm just picking numbers off the top of here, but let's say it's costing you $60 a stock unit to get that, and you go, man, that's good. And we go, well, actually, this client group that with like-minded farmers like yourself, they're actually doing 140, but they're doing it for $52 a stock unit. You'll go, oh okay, well, how are they doing that? And then we can break it down and say, look, one of the areas that they're doing is that their, their kill date or their, their income seems to come in earlier than, than yours. And, and we're getting to the stage where hopefully we can start providing this live as opposed to um, 12 or 18 months later once those annual accounts are done. Um, but I think um, you're getting the right people around you, and I'll talk about that soon, actually. I think... Um, uh, as businesses become more complex, it's making sure that the people that you've got around you are actually adding value to your business and they're not just there to tick a box, i.e. just to pay tax. Um, or, you know, it could be any anyone that you've got, your seed rep, your fert rep, are they actually adding value and do they challenge your thinking? And, and also, do you allow them to challenge your thinking? Or are you crossing your arms and going, oh, no, we did that last year, we'll just do it again this year, eh? It's like, oh, if we want to, yep, that's fine, but they should be challenging you. Great. Thanks, Blair. Um, financial management. Yeah, so look, I, I make the assumption here that um, some of you don't budget. And, um, and I'll be really honest, um, I've met some fantastic and highly successful farmers that don't have a budget. Um, that's not normal, but they've been in their business for, for a long period and, and they know what levers to pull. Um, 
and when to tighten things up. But we should have, have a budget. Um, we should have an, at least an annual budget where um, we should be planning ahead and having that 12 month view or you know what's the three year view or the five year view and what happens if interest rates do this and what happens if um commodity prices do this because one thing we all i think that we all probably know on this phone call on this webinar is that costs are rising so if costs are rising our income has to rise doesn't it otherwise we're going backwards so how do we increase our income and some of that is in your control and some of that is in, you know, your suppliers' control. So how are they marketing? What are they? What 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 are commodity prices doing? In the last you know few years, it has been quite good. Um, so you know, do do you budget? And then how do you budget? And we spoke about that briefly. Is that you know it does start with an annual budget, um, and it starts with what you did last year. So what were your expenses? Um, if you spent twelve thousand dollars on animal health. That's the starting point. It's like, okay, I spent 12000 but was there one offs in there? Or what happened? Or what are you likely to do the same thing this year? And then spread that 12000 over a monthly plan. And, and don't do it. You know, don't. One of the things we used to um, see in the bank is if someone who didn't really know farming did a, did a budget, you know, like an advisor or an accountant, um, everything would just be spread evenly across the 12 months. And that's and that just doesn't mean, you know, like it's just not helping you at all. What you want is a budget that shows the cash flow, the monthly cash flow, potential overdraft requirement, and what at, at, what at any stage um, the impact is going to have on your bottom line. Um, so, so getting the budget is probably relatively easy. It's actually um, what you do with it. And this is where, you know, the actuals versus budget. So, and often this happens, you know, role model would look like every month you're doing this. Um, common is every two months as you, do, as you do your GST that you're having a look at the actuals. So, so what, what actually did, what, what came in? So how many lambs did I sell? What was that amount? And then what did I budget and seeing if there's a variance? And, and I said I was going to spend X on on animal health or fertiliser and what did I actually spend? And so you start doing variance reporting and what that's doing is shaping up that, am I on track or not? Am I likely to need more money? Is it going to be better than I thought? And is there going to be a variance here, a greater variance at the end of the year, positive or negative? Because then you can start planning for it. And, and maybe if it's going to be a negative, what can I cut out to try and bring that, um, bring that variance back? Um, and if it's a loss, then how can I turn that back into a profit or, or at least a break-even result? Um, and I guess, um, you know, someone asked the question before around targets and goals to reach. Of course, you know, and, and I talk about goals regularly with people, whether it be personal goals or farming goals, and some people say, oh, don't talk to me about that hairy fairy stuff. Oh, I don't need that. Well, or call it objectives then, or call it what are you trying to achieve, or what, why are you in business, and, and in five or 10 or 15, 20 years' time, um, what, what, what do you want to achieve? So it doesn't have to be called airy-fairy stuff, but what, what, is it that you're, what is it that you're trying to, um, um, to focus on, and where, where do you want to be? Because I think it's, and then you can break those down. So the big goal might be to be, you know, debt free or to have X amount of equity or to have a, an income stream of, you know, a net bottom line income stream of $150,000 a year. And so how am I going to do that? And that's when you start breaking it down to actually to do this, I need A, B, C and D. And then this is where it starts. So just having um, goals. Um, do, do you drop? Do you adopt technology? Um, are you spending hours to try and complete? You know, GST is a good example. And I met someone recently who's still doing their GST, what I would call the old-fashioned way, very much a sort of like paper-based um, code. Like it was just odd in, in my world. Um, and um, and so the time to do that is, is unbelievable. Whereas now with likes of zero, for example, for example like you can probably do your GST in fifteen minutes. Because you're coding all the way through, um, you know, as something comes up, it's just automatically either coded because it remembers what it was last time, or you just code it. And then when it comes to GST, you just do your GST, what's well, actually done for you, and then just flick it straight through to, you know, your My IRD. And then you're just going to make the payment or, or wait for a refund. And hopefully you're making a payment. Um, 
you know, do, do you have a proactive accountant? So to, to Greg's point before, you know, there's, um, you know, I probably should, I probably should put this across all advisors, not just single out accountants. But, um, you know, are they are they people that you go in there and you and you get excited about meeting them and like, here's here's what I've done for the year and where's the opportunities? Because um, I think that, you know, um, I think that anyone who's involved in your business and you're paying them to be involved in your business and whether that's directly or indirectly so your seed rep you may not actually pay that person directly but you're buying the seed and um, are they giving you good advice and is your pasture quality and is your animal performance improving um you know the genetics so fertilizer reps um just people that you're surrounding yourself with are they are they proactive are they proactive are they adding value um, and then, you know, I think this is this is one of the key ones for me, and this is a, an area where I, you know, firmly believe in, and, um, and and place a lot of emphasis on is that we can sit down with our clients and do a good plan, and, and they go, yeah, this is this is really good, but unless there's someone there to hold you to account, you're unlikely to to achieve it. And if I go back to the the, the sports analogy, or, or joining a gym is probably a better analogy. Like we can all join a gym, and Gym memberships is one of those, you know, it's a fantastic model because people get excited after Christmas and they go, I'll join a gym and then they start paying for this gym membership. It's like, I'll go, yeah, I've got to go. And then they don't, they stop, they, they go less and less, and they, but they don't want to cancel the gym membership because that's a sense of failure. And so if you're setting goals, it's no different is who's going to hold you to account to it. And there's some research done that um, if you've got a goal, in mind, you have a 10% chance of achieving it. That lifts to 50% if you create a plan on how you're going to do it. 65% if you tell someone else, but 95% chance if you meet with someone regularly and you provide updates on your progress, how are you tracking, what's happened, what are you doing, um, is, it, is, it, is it on track? Um, so I guess um, you know, it, it speaks volumes. Um, for some of you, um, you'll have employees in, in your business um, that, look, employees can be really exciting, they can be challenging, um, but ultimately they're, they're really important. And I, and, I, and I think that, you know, you often hear stories that, um, oh, that person have always had bad people and, and they, they, the staff turnover is really high. And, and you sort of think, when I hear that, I think, but have a look in the mirror. You know, what, what are you doing? What, what behaviours and what strategies and what... What meeting rhythms have you got in place, and what training programs have you got for your for your people? Um, because it often starts starts with you. You know, is I've just listed uh, these up actually. But do you have alignment? Um, you know, do they know what's expected? Do they know what you're aiming for? Do you discuss their performance and, and their values, or, and your values? And and often, you know. Um, a lot, it's just changing, but um, previously a lot of farmers would say, "Look, we don't have uh, you know like values like businesses do. You know, we don't have our values on our on our wall. Um, they're not in the, the workshop." Um, that's changing. Increasingly, they are, and one of the reasons they are is because they want to have a brand. You know, like um, my brand, my farm brand, and what do I stand for? And often, when you think about values, it's the, it's what you're trying trying to instill into your children or you have instilled into your children and so it's a really it's a much easier conversation to have with one of your team members and when I talk about team members I'm not just talking about people that are you know day-to-day -day working on your farm it's, it's the people that that surround your business and, and that you value their advice is that are they living into your values you know um, are they reliable are they proactive are they good communicators um, are they honest and so you start calling out those sort of things if you see negativity or you want to have a, a conversation with someone about their their behavior it's a lot easier to talk about how they're not living into your values as opposed to directly um it feels like you're potentially insulting them on um on their own on their own um behavior but you're talking about it well in relation to our value, our company values. This is this is where you're letting us down. So um, you know, I get really passionate about about people, and I get passionate about um, making sure that um, they know what's expected of them and and what success looks like. Because um, if you haven't told them that, hey, this year on this farm, we're going to sit down and work with you. We're going to run through what what 
what we what we really want to achieve. And you don't have to go through everything. You don't have to get, disclose your financials. Um, some people do, but um, these are the headline numbers that we're targeting, and and so it sort of makes sense if you're starting away lambs, and you've got a like last year you might have got lambs away at you know seventeen point six kilos. This year you want to do eighteen. Is that if you're starting away lambs and you get excited about actually they're on track, and because we've put these new pastures in or we've changed their genetics, that we're on track. It just helps that whole. I understand, and now I'll work a wee bit harder for you because it makes sense. And before I move on from that, one of the things um, I would also encourage is at least quarterly um, performance reviews. And so that performance review is really important to um, um, to allow them to catch up with you on how they believe they're performing, what's you know what's frustrating them, um, but also for you to share um, or reinforce some of the things that you've already talked about that where they could improve. Um, and I always say here, don't bring up new examples. Those examples should have been shared throughout the throughout the year. Um, you know, like that time that you left the gate open and all the sheep got out. Um, you know, you can refer back to it, but that should have been brought up at the time. Um, and so it's just sort of, hey, these are our standards. This is what we expect, and, and are you okay? But also, always ask the question at the end is, um, is what what can I improve? You know, how how can I be a better better leader for you? You know, how how can I help your development? Um, are you getting what you want? What what else is important to you? So that's quite a, a big session on its own. Um, how are we going for time, Greg? Yeah, look, we've got um, just under nine minutes, well, just, yeah, just under 10 minutes left uh, for a allotted time. Just yeah. one yeah. question on that. You talk about performance reviews. Um, yeah. Can you just expand on that a little bit too? I mean, you're talking about that in respect to perhaps people that might be employed. What about yes. the actual um, business owners? How often should they be reviewing their own uh, performance and what have you? Oh, well, ideally, that, that would be part of those, you know, like um, quarterly catch-ups with, um, with whoever their coach or support person may be, um, but if, if if they don't want to do that, I think that um, like yeah, like at least quarterly. It could even be monthly, um, but that's where the KPIs um, and and if and if not, then it's like annually, or at least annually. Like it's a husband and wife situation, and they're in it together. It's like right, let's sit down. We've got the information from the from the. The trouble is when we talk about annual counts, well, to me, it's, it's so so delayed. Like, it's it's a year ago. It's like, it's almost irrelevant. It's like, well, how are we tracking actuals versus budget for this year? And and um, and if we're going to finish the year at the end of March or it's the end of June, is that by July or April, we should be able to run a report to see how that's gone. So I think that um, sitting down and just going through what did we expect and how did we go, you know, at least quarterly, but ideally, you know, I mean, you could do it annually depending on what the project is. Okay, thanks, Blair. Look, I guess just really wanting to draw everybody's attention to that chat box again. Um, so we've only got a few minutes left. Um, if you have got any questions, you, I, I really encourage you to, uh, to write them down now and get them through to us. Um, so Blair, where, where to from here? Oh, look, I can talk about farm succession, um, but that's a massive uh, subject in itself. So I've got some things in there, but um, look, all I'd say, and I do a 15-minute presentation on this, um, so that could be a topic for another day if you want. But, um, you know, it's planning early, and, um, and I work with you know, all different ages on this, but just plan early. What, what are your options? Um, and, um, and, and just the preparation. And when I talk about preparation, it's, it's, it's of the farm, it's of the, the, the person, if it's a family member coming through, but also yourselves. And, and for those of you that are you know, farm owners on here, we, we really focus on you. What is it that you want? Um, what's your income going to be? Where are you going to live? And what are you going to do? Because it's really important we get that stuff right. And then, and then we worry about the children and, and the whole fair versus equal. So that's a big topic. I won't go into that today. Um, I, will, I will just finish, though. Um, I'll just quickly finish with some of the... Um, the common traits of successful people is that they always have a bigger plan. It's not just about, you know, the, this year. Um, it's not just about next week. It's actually down the track. This is what I plan for. So, so what is your big plan? Um, and, and burying your head in the sand and not worrying about it and not talking to your kids about it is, is really dangerous. And I think that, um, you know, what is your biggest plan? And I think it's so easy not to talk about it. 
um, but that's not the right answer. Um, they do monitor and track their performance, so how am I going? They set goals. Um, what's, you know, where, um, where am I going? And it's no different to, you look at the, the Olympics at the moment, and of course they monitor and track their performance to get to where they are. Um, they have an open mind, so, you know, if you meet an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur, there's someone who's always questioning, like they're always interested. It doesn't mean they're going to adopt everything, but it's always that whole, I've got an open mind, I'm prepared to listen as opposed to arms folded. No, nah, this is the way I'm doing it. My dad did it this way and this is what works on this farm. It's like, okay, that's fine. Um, and they always look for better ways. So is technology helping? Um, what, like, Even if it's working really well, is there a better way? And actually I, I can change because I know it's going to be better. And if you think about the late... Um, um, Sir Peter Blake, one of the things that he said is, look, will it make the boat go faster? So will it make the boat go faster? I don't need all the airy-fairy stuff that goes, you know, the spreadsheets and everything that goes with what you're telling me, but will it will it make my farm? Um, will, it, will it improve my profit? Will it give me more time away from the farm? Will it give me mind freedom? They get things done, so they're very much in that quadrant too. They're planning, they're, they're doing things. And if you, you know, they're great people to get on committees, they're great people in the district um, because they're generally the busiest people because they get things done. And they, and they value their team. They actually recognise that their team um, is providing a lot of value um, to the overall business. So that's just a very nice way to finish, I think. And then any questions? Okay, it looks like everybody's um, decided to stay uh, reasonably quiet there, uh, Blair. But look, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much um, for your time this afternoon. Uh, I think there's been a, a raft of really good uh, points raised in your presentation. Um, and, and a couple that sort of um, sprang to my mind, um, I guess it's about that mindset stuff and, and you know, understanding what it is you can control and what you can't control or influence and actually focus on those things. Um, I remember seeing a, a survey done a number of years ago um, where uh, they looked at the 10 things that um, that business owners uh, considered to be most important uh, factors affecting their business. And uh, for commercial, far, uh, commercial businesses, uh, and I'm talking about, you know, businesses and towns, um, I think they, uh, they looked at um, out of their 10 there were about three things that they looked to um, be able to control or, or consider to be uh, worth investing some time into. Whereas when they looked at um, farmers or separated the farmer group out, they found that uh, farmers tried to control seven of the 10 things, but um, ultimately eight of those things um, weren't possible for the farmer to directly control. So uh, understanding what you control is really important. Um, Planning, really big logistics in terms of um, that achiever matrix, understand um, the importance of uh, getting your activities lined up well in advance and planning to do them so that you're not rushing at the last minute, that 11th hour stuff. Um, make time to work on your business, another really important one there. And um, take time to review not only your staff's performance, but your own performance. And and I'd suggest that's, uh, that's regular um, um, uh, variance report uh, opportunities over um, over GST reports and so forth. So look, um, thank you very much for your attendance today. Um, I hope uh, you have been able to take a lot out of it and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much.